We won defense and it led to a faster pace for us and we started getting out in transition. You and JV, man, you were right there tonight. How important is he to that man? And what type of chemistry are you going to know? It's something you get to know and can't play together. I mean, JV's a phenomenal player. I think I'm an okay player, uh, <laughs> but I think we're both just smart players, and I, <clears throat> I've been saying it in the media since the beginning of the year. Uh, it's just gonna take time, and the more we, the more we play on the court with each other, the better our chemistry is. So now it's like, okay, I know he likes to shoot the ball over here. I know, even though he's open for a three, he'd probably rather get to this position, and he's starting to learn my attacking spots. Um, so, like I said, uh, the more we're on the court together, the more chemistry we'll build. I mean, perhaps one of the three best games of your career, these last two games, how good are you feeling on that court with everything you're doing right now? Uh, I think the part that feels the most amazing to me, the, the best part, is just the belief that my coaches and my teammates have in me, um, especially uh, Teresa Witherspoon and uh, Corey Brewer. I mean, those two are always, you know, just pushing me to be great. Um, I can't stress it enough. Um, even if there are points where I'm like, ah, I'm not feeling like myself. I'm not, it's not feeling right. I mean, they're always pushing me to be great. So just the belief in my coaches, my teammates that they have in me. And uh, just your, your passing has really stood out these past few games. Trey talked about how much that sets up everybody else for being able to pick your spots and knowing how to pick up on the defense. How much has that, do you feel like, improves your game and made you even more difficult to stop? I got to tell people all the time, uh, I mean, I was trained to be a point guard. So, you know, when you're a point guard, your job is you got to see the floor. Uh, you got to see things even before they happen. And I've been saying it all season, we got some special shooters on this team. Uh, so when I'm able to get into a certain spot, sometimes I need, I'm not even getting into a spot to score. I'm just setting the defense up so they can load and find my shooters. And uh, Dyson's first career start tonight, just how good was that to see and just what he's been developing as a 19-year-old? Uh, I've been saying the past few games, I mean, we're all watching it unfold in front of our eyes. I mean, he just gets better and better the more reps he gets and the more PT he gets. Past couple games, you're getting right there to that triple double, creeping up on it, but not quite there. How much you got on your mind late in that fourth quarter? Uh, me personally, uh, I don't really think about it. If I'm, I'm being, I'm being completely honest. I think it's more so like I said with my teammates and my coaches. They have the belief in me. So when I'm coming to the sideline, they're like, "Yeah, you need two more. Or you need three more. Go get you one." And I'm like, "I'm trying to get this win so we can go home." <laughs> You mentioned some of the shooters, obviously Trey is uh, a knockdown shooter in six nights. The dribble handoff stuff that you have going in the fourth quarter, is, is that set stuff? Is that free man some of just kind of know when you can you know, be working out of it and playing off that? Uh, it's, it's like freelance, but it's something that me and Trey, I mean, I watched Trey uh, play last year because I wasn't playing. I remember thinking to myself, man, the way the defense plays me, all I got to do is just go hand the ball off and just kind of just stand there. I mean, he's a special shooter. So in training camp, me and him picked up on it like that. So whenever we have the opportunity, we just get straight to it. And he can drive. So if they try to cover his three, he gets to the basket. You also told a story about uh, lined up for free throws, I assume, which you And when this person is going to get left, he has to go on front. Yeah. <laughs> In the basketball terms, that's a that's a hard question to answer. Um, I guess without sounding like cocky, because when you're out there, it's like somebody telling somebody. Uh, stop Giannis from going to the basket or stop Curry from shooting threes. I mean, this is basketball. Uh, you know, you're taught to get to your spot. So it's just about the setup. And if they want to forcefully try to push you right, I'm going to go right because I got shooters. So I'm still able to get to the basket. It's just how I get there. I mean, like I said, like I said before, Spurs is a, a great organization. They have great coaching. So it's not as easy as it looks. Let me say that. It's, it is hard at some points, but 
For my shooters, uh, it makes it easier. Uh, try to make you cop, sound cocky one more time, but uh, you, you know that basically every time you go into the game, you don't see two bodies in front of you when you got the bubbles. How do you get to the point where you're comfortable seeing that and knowing I'm going to still get to where I want to get to, even if they throw multiple people at you? Um, I'm going to thank four people for that. Uh, my stepfather, my trainer, Jasper Bibbs, uh, my best friend, Axel Nimboy, and my big brother, Philip Holmes. So during the summer, when we were working out, you know, we sh we talked about it. My stepdad was like, look, you're going to get doubled. It is what it is. You got to get used to it. So the whole summer, we just kind of practice against double teams and sometimes three people and just trying to make the right play. So I want to thank those four people for helping me with that. What, uh, what point guards did you like watching? Uh, <clears throat> so my mom, my mom put me on Magic Bird because of their playmaking abilities. And if you watch Michael Jordan, even when Michael Jordan, you know he's a phenomenal scorer, when he had to play point guard, I think he averaged a triple double. Uh, but my stepfather, my stepfather is more so like old school, but they got a certain taste. Like you got Kenny Anderson, I'd watch. Uh, Earl the Pro Monroe. Uh, a player named Skip Wise, who a lot of people don't know, he kind of put me on those kind of players because uh, uh, Fly Williams, he put me on those players because they just play fundamentally sound basketball, but they all had their own flair to it. There was one you didn't mention, but I thought you might mention Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson? Because the hacking down, <laughs> uh, yeah, my stepdad uh, put me on to him a little bit. Um, I mean, it's a lot of players because the game is just so, I mean, so broad. Um, man, who's another one that I really enjoy? Obviously, Magic. Man, it's a tough one. There's a lot of play. Uh, Phil Ford. From Duke, I mean from UNC. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the next. I was thinking. Of, I was thinking. Of, I was. I was thinking of the next one with uh, Bobby Hurley. I mean, they just get to their spots. They just when a player can get to their spots, even with tough defenders on them. I love watching those kind of players. Thanks. No problem. You guys have a good night.